I have avoided making this video as long as I can. Um, and then I made the last video about making your bike more comfortable. And I got more requests than ever for this subject. What is it? Your saddle. So the reason I avoided making this video is not because I'm uncomfortable talking about it. It is just a subject that's so personal and my experience and my knowledge is based on what I've learned and a little bit of what Nathan's learned. So it's very limited and I didn't feel I'm really in the position to help you guys out. So the best thing I can hope for in this video is two things. I'll share what I learned and what I know and some of the mistakes I see people making. And then I'd like you guys all to share below in the comments what you've learned, if you have some experiences you'd like to share, and if you're having a problem, share that with us. Just be really specific on the problem you're having. That helps the rest of us help you. So with that, let's get started. If you watch my videos, you know I think cycling should be simple and fun because the more you cycle, the better life is. And cycling is not fun if all you can think about is your saddle hurting. So what can I tell you? My journey was pretty simple. I started cycle commuting and my commute was 14 kilometers each way. So it was about almost 30 K a day I was doing. I started out and it was painful. So if you haven't cycled for a while, your sit bones are gonna have to get used to being in the saddle and having you know, the pressure on them. That's normal. And I would recommend just getting through it. I took a couple of months, I was cycling three days of the week in the winter and then up to five in the spring. So it did take me about, I'd say a month. I was wincing after, you know, the first couple of weeks um, due to the sit bones hurting, but then they got used to it. They got broken in. I don't recommend even running out and getting padded shorts or anything. If you have a commute that's less than 15K, I think just let your body get used to it. You're better off because you really want to be wearing padded knickers for, you know, a shortish journey or all the time. I don't think it's necessary. So that's my advice at the beginning. It probably will hurt, but it shouldn't continue to hurt. If it does, um, then you need to identify the problem. And I think the best thing you can do is to be specific. I get a lot of questions and sometimes um, husbands ask me questions on behalf of their wives, but my wife's saddle hurts her or she's uncomfortable isn't really something that gives me the ability to help. So when you ask a question and you need help, just be specific. So for me, what happened was I got a road bike and I went out on a longer ride and soon realized that I was thinking about my saddle way too much. And I knew my sit bones weren't the problem. I'd gone through that, it went away. This was something different, it was numbness. And you have some you know, nerves and um, major arteries going through an a the area that you sit in your saddle on. So for me, um, what it turned out because it was numbness was that I needed to get the pressure off of that area to you know allow blood flow and stop the numbness. So I got a saddle like this. It has a, a cutout here as you can see and that took the pressure off. Job done. This happened to be the first one I got. I was really lucky that way. This did the job and it was a very comfortable saddle. This is actually a really popular one. If I if you can still get it I'll put the link below or the equivalent of the newer version below. Uh, this one is an old one for me. Uh, I have a new one. So as you can see, I, I wore it through, but I got the same one again. Great saddle for me. Um, did the job, but I was, I was quite specific on what the problem was. So I was able to find the solution. So that's my tip for you there. Be specific, narrow down the problem so that, you know, when you're asking for help, people can help you better. The other thing I've learned over the years is that there are a lot of uh, local bike shops that have saddle libraries. So it can get quite expensive if you get the wrong saddle and keep having to get other saddles because they don't work. And saddles, the good ones, can be expensive. So look for a local bike shop that has a saddle library. And in fact, in making this video, I learned of a company that's just started up that has an online saddle library. So you can use a saddle, decide if it's for you. If it's not, try another one until you find the one that's for you. And in fact, on their website, and I'll link it below in the description, they tell you how to measure your sit bones, which is really important because people's sit bones and where they sit on their saddles. So they're, you know, you want them in the right position. So you need a saddle that is wide enough or narrow enough to get the sit bones in the right part of the saddle. Because you do want the weight on the sit bones, not on the softer tissues. So having your sit bones positioned properly is important. So knowing the size of your sit bones can help you choose the right saddle. Strangely, this saddle is just called a large. I've since learned it's 153. I'm um, 155 is my measurement. So it is technically 
a little bit too small, but it's done me fine through the years. So there must be a little bit of wiggle room there for that, but getting something in the right range of your sit bones, that is important. As I mentioned, I would share Nathan's experience as well. So obviously we know each other quite well and uh, he is one of those people that can pretty much sit on any saddle and be fine. Me, I take that saddle if I rent a bike, put it on the rented bike, no chance seeing it for me. When we cycled across Canada, our bikes were waiting for us in Vancouver. They were Canadian bikes. And I took my beloved Cell Italia uh, gel flow saddle with me and put it on. Nathan took the bog standard saddle that came with the bike. Now, most bikes, you probably are going to have to change the saddle unless you're really lucky. Um, my Canyon came with this saddle. It's also a Cell Italia, same brand as my favorite. Um, but when you find the one, <laughs> it's really hard to let it go. Um, so I tried this one, hoped I'd get on with it. Not so much. Um, it wasn't horrific the way the Boardman saddles was on my old road bike, but it just wasn't as comfortable, so I swapped. Nathan, he thought he would get on with the saddle that came with the bike. He was wrong. On day two, he was in pain. On day three, he was just, yeah, in excruciating pain. And we got to a town with a bike shop and he went in and asked them for the biggest, jelliest saddle <laughs> they had. Saddles are a little counterintuitive that way. When you're riding long distance, you actually don't want the softest, cushiest saddle. You're looking to reduce friction. And if you're sinking into a cushy gel saddle, you're gonna cause more contact and you're gonna cause more friction likely. So it's unlikely that's the solution for most people. There's probably someone out there that works for, so always exceptions, listen to your body. Um, but yeah, it's a bit counterintuitive. Those saddles that look really hard and uncomfortable are surprisingly um, the best thing for long dis distance riding. And one of the favorite saddles of tours are Brooks saddles and they're leather and they, after a break-in period, mold to your body and your sit bones and people swear by them on world tours. Um, it's now what Nathan has on his uh, commuter bike. But back to Canada, the shop would not sell him a saddle. They said, no, have you tried adjusting your bike? We think you need to try that first. So, wow, <laughs> away we went, they, they turned down the sale. And for the next couple hours, Nathan adjusted millimeter, I mean, millimeter by millimeter. We stopped 20 minutes later, another adjustment. So it's very, very little adjustments you want to make um, to see if there's a difference. Now I thought, well, how is this ever going to work? He's in pain. He's done the damage. You know, how's he going to know when he's got the right, the better position? Cause it hurts. Um, but he did after it must've been about three and a half, four hours of minor adjustments. He knew he hit the sweet spot and he was just like, Oh, and that was it. He was fine for the whole rest of the journey across Canada with that saddle. So amazing advice from that bike shop, you know, just try adjusting it first before you swap it out. So another little tip for you there might help for some of you, but yeah, you're, having your positioning on your bike is crucial. And it's one of the reasons why um, if you're commuting, I don't believe running out and buying padded shorts is the solution because I people tour the world without padded shorts. So getting your position correct, you know, a bike that's the right size for you and all that is very important. I don't wear chamois cream. This is a personal choice. I forgot to wear it one day and realized it didn't make a difference. I was wearing it because I was told I needed to and it turns out I didn't need to. So I fear that a lot of people out there are wearing chamois cream because they're covering up or trying to solve a problem that's to do with something else that chamois cream isn't even meant to be for. So maybe your positioning is wrong and, and you're trying to deal with that, or maybe you've got the wrong size saddle, maybe you've got the wrong positioning of your saddle. So I, um, yeah, I'd be careful if you're lathering on chamois cream in the hopes to cover up some pain or, you know, if there's friction in things, it may be better off to try something else. Um, yeah, I just worry people are using chamois cream for the wrong reasons. I want to recommend an article for you guys. So it's in this magazine, uh, Casquette. It's a women's cycling magazine. Um, maybe you men actually will find some use in this article as well. It's written by Emily Chapel, an ultra endurance writer. It's one of the most frank articles I've read on saddles and it talks about flat mash. Oh yes, flat mash, <laughs> fantastic term. Um, and I hope that it may help some of you out there. So that brings me on to getting to know yourself very personally. Little lumps and bumps could turn into big lumps and bumps, so do not ignore them. If you know what causes you ingrown hairs, take note, avoid. <laughs> um, yeah, ingrown hairs actually can be really dangerous because uh, they can, yeah, grow in and cause infections and blood 
poisoning. It can get nasty really quick. So if you do a lot of time in the saddle, you want to avoid ingrown hairs. If there's any lumps or bumps or any cysts or anything forming that's causing you discomfort, don't ignore it. Talk to your doctor. Get to know yourself really well. <laughs> it's so important, guys. Little things can turn into big things and that can mean time off the bike. So don't ignore. As I said at the beginning, I think the best thing for this video I can hope for is that we can all help each other. So don't be shy. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. If you have experience you want to share, share it. I think, yeah, as a group, we can hopefully make sure we're all comfortable in our saddles and are able to enjoy our rides to the fullest. As always, thanks for watching. Until the next video.